Hey CCH fam, um, I'm excited to be leading you guys through the book of Ephesians. Uh, I know for those of you who went on the retreat this past weekend, uh, we mentioned Ephesians a lot through for the theme of Illuminate this year. And uh, so I'm just excited that I can show you some of the things I thought were cool in this book and then lead you to um, the, the passage that we, we got our theme from. And so I'm going to actually start in chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, where Paul talks about how we were dead in our sin and now we can be alive in Christ uh, because God is so rich in his mercy. And so in verse 8, he says, You are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. And so I always like this reminder because, you know, sometimes it feels like I'm definitely not doing enough and like other people are doing more and doing a better job at it than I am. But if we just follow um, what God is leading us to, he like, that's good. And so um, like God saves us and then as we follow and have a relationship with us, he leads us to do things. But it's not so we can measure measure ourselves up against other people and think, oh, we don't or we do deserve salvation. It's only um, through God as he gives it to us that we can be saved. And so later on in chapter 3, verses 8 through 13, um, Paul talks about how he was the least of all saints and yet he was given grace to proclaim to the gentiles about uh jesus and so he says that he was um he was given to shed light for all about the administration of the mystery hidden for ages in god who created all things this is so that god's multi-faceted wisdom may now be known through the church to the rulers and authorities in the heavens this is according to his eternal purpose, accomplishing Christ Jesus our Lord. In him we have boldness and confidence, access through faith in him. So then I ask you to not be discouraged over my afflictions on your behalf, for they are your glory. So I like it when he mentions his afflictions, because as most people know, Paul <laughs> did not have an easy life. And even though like he followed Jesus through everything, it's not like Jesus was like, oh, here's will just like help you do this and help you do that. No, like Paul was thrown in jail, he was beaten. He was just, yeah, he was just beat up pretty bad. And um, he says like, even though I'm afflicted, um, it's for Jesus' glory, like it's for God's glory. And so I like that reminder uh, for me because sometimes I think if things are really hard, God's not in it and God's not leading me, even though God is leading me. He's just saying it's not always going to be easy and it's going to take some work, but it doesn't mean God's not present in that. And it'll just help us uh, persevere and grow so that we can do more for the kingdom. And then a few verses later, Paul says that he prays that he may grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the power in your inner being through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you, with all the saints, what is the length? Oh, I, my bad. I pray that you, being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and width, height and depth of God's love, and to know Christ's love that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And so, honestly, that makes me think of Sunday school when I was in, like, elementary school or, or preschool where it just where you have the song that talks about um, the length and width and height and depth of God's love. And um, I just remember, you know, you did some of the, the signs for it. And I just remember singing that a lot. Um, but I think it's important to understand the depth of his love because um, I always go like, oh, like I'm not being, like I'm not doing what I need to do in Jesus. Uh, for his kingdom and I, like, I know I'm not like studying the Bible enough or reading enough or praying enough um, but like God still loves me so much and it's not 
based off of my actions, I can change how much he loves me. And it's just crazy because, uh, like, if you think of other people, I feel like as humans, we have a much shallower type of love where um, if someone hurts you or isn't nice to you or changes and leaves, um, we might not love them as much because they've hurt us. And it's like we hurt God pretty often because he, he wants the best for us. And a lot of times we don't do what's best for us. And God's, God still loves us the same. Like it does not change no matter what we do. And so it's just, that's also just a good reminder for me uh, just to know how deeply God loves us. And so now we'll get to chapter four. And so in verse 18, um, in reference to how gen Gentiles used to live before they knew Jesus, um, he says, they are darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the hardness of their hearts. And so over the summer, I was a part of a small group. It was super cool, but they talked about having a soft heart and hard feet. And they used this verse as a reference. So they're just saying how when you have a soft heart, you can be empathetic and loving and you just, you care for other people and you care about their salvation or um, the injustices of this world. And when you have hard feet, you are, you can go out and do something about it and you aren't afraid to be uncomfortable or to follow God through that. And so I like that because um, especially in America, I feel like we might have a soft heart for some, some aspects of the world, but we also have soft feet. So we're too, we don't wanna, you know, get uncomfortable and go out and see just how dark the world is or um, you know, you're too scared to go up and say hi to someone or just to follow God through like wherever he's leading you. And so I just think that's a good reminder that we need to have a soft heart for um, what God wants us to and then hard feet to follow us where God wants us to. And then, so if we jump to chapter five, this is where we get the theme for illuminate. And so this is the reference. So if you start in verse eight, it's, it'll be eight through 14. So he says, for you are once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Testing what is pleasing to the Lord. Don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what is done by them in secret. Everything exposed by the light is made visible. For what makes everything visible is light. Therefore it is said, get up sleeper and rise up from the dead and Christ will shine on you. And so in other translations, verse 13 um, says, everything exposed by the light is illuminated. Um, so that's where we get the word illuminate uh, for our theme. And so this is really good. Travis talked about it a lot over the retreat and so did Kaylee and Ike and Lance. And um, it's just really good. Travis mentioned how uh, for light and darkness, light can penetrate darkness, but darkness cannot penetrate light. And so I just like thinking about that, how we can influence so many people and bring the light so many places um, and because the light will penetrate it. And so it's just, yeah, it's super good because right before it, right before chapter five, it talks about um, living the new life and like uh, shedding off your old self so that you can have a new self in Christ. And so I think uh, as uh, chapter five makes a comparison between light versus darkness, it's just talking about how the light exposes what you need to shed so that you can put on the armor of God. And so... In chapter six, that's where we get the armor of God, where you have, um, let's see, the truth of uh, the belt of truth and the righteousness on your chest. And um, in verse 15, it mentions your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. And so I like how um, Paul just kind of says, you need to strip your old self of everything that is impure and um, immoral. And then he also says like, this is what you need to strip, like what you need to dress yourself with 
and protect yourself with. And I like that he uses a more um, visual type of thing with the armor of God. And so I liked specifically your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace because I think we often feel unprepared to share the gospel um, even though it can bring peace to people and it's life-saving. And it's just, I just like that it's okay. Kind of with the hardness of your feet, you need to be ready to go where God calls you. And so I, yeah, I like how it talks about the gospel of peace with that. And so then later on in verse 20, Paul says, Paul asked that they can pray that he might be bold enough to speak about it as he should in reference to, you know, God's, like the gospel. And I think that's a prayer that we need to have too, that we might be bold enough to share um, the good news and that we can just be bold and just, you know, just jump in and just go, okay. Like we love people so much that we want them to stop hurting um, and we want them to know you know, that there's a God who loves you and you have been saved through Jesus Christ. And so that's just a little bit of Ephesians. I encourage you guys to go read all of it and look at um, resources for it because there's just a lot of good stuff. But yeah, so I hope you guys have a good week and I'm excited to see you guys in two and a half weeks when we all move in.